there are still many who are still trapped in this in the in uh, in the in the power in this kingdom of darkness so in the power of darkness because the kingdom of darkness is holding many in bondage because of what because of sin now but when through the preaching and the teaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. <laughs> now, this is how many will come to receive what they receive Christ as Savior Lord. He then becomes the king of their lives. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. We're we, uh, starting a new sort of uh, a new series, a new topic, you know, this, um, this uh, today for this month. Uh, we try to look at every month, we look at you know, different you know, topics, so by the grace of God. So, and we give thanks to God for the grace uh, and the, the such a wonderful privilege to be able to, um, uh, you know, keep sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. Um, the Bible says, you no, know, and so mightily grew the word of God and the word and prevailed. Acts chapter 19, I think verse 21, there about. So the word of God must continue to what? To grow and prevail. Acts chapter 19, uh, quickly. Um, okay, now Acts 19, Acts chapter 19, verse 20 says, So the word of God, so the word of the Lord grew mightily and, and what and prevailed. Praise God, hallelujah. So uh, uh, it is the word of God that transforms the lives of men, that transforms the lives of people. So that is why, you know, we are constantly um, preaching and teaching this gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Now, so what we're looking at now today is um, uh, we're starting this topic of called establishing God's kingdom in people's hearts, establishing what God's kingdom are uh, in people's hearts. Um, we uh, certainly you know, last year, we, and, and well, basically last year, uh, the Lord you know, um, gave us as a ministry uh, the bandits, you know, this mandate for um, his kingdom, um, about his kingdom, advancing his kingdom, establishing his kingdom, expansion, his kingdom expansion, you know, mandate. So that is what we are on. And um, I just, uh, over the over the last couple of days um, or weeks, you know, this each time I'm praying, it's about uh, praying about the kingdom, praying about the kingdom, praying about the kingdom, uh, for God's kingdom to be what to be established. Praise the Lord, hallelujah, uh, in the hearts and minds of people. So um, that is what we want to look at, you know, um, for 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 this um, service, um, we will certainly continue with it, um, you know, for next uh, next week. So, but just as a form of introduction, um, you know, when we talk about kingdom, right? We, I mean, we we'll talk about we're talking about um, a, a a state or a government that has a king or a queen as its head. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. So when we're talking about the kingdom, we're talking about a state or a government that has a king or a queen as its what as its head. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. And then um, it is also regarded, you no know, another definition for um, kingdom is this the the um, the spiritual sovereignty of God or Christ. The spiritual sovereignty of God or who or Christ. Amen. Um, the, um, then the, the third definition is the domain, the domain over which the spiritual sovereignty of God or Christ uh, extends, whether in heaven or on earth. This is the uh, the spiritual uh, so, uh, the domain, the domain over which the spiritual sovereignty of God or Christ what uh, extends, whether in heaven or on earth. Praise the Lord. Uh, just to give you a bit of an example, over the United Kingdom, for instance, you know, we have you know, uh, King Charles uh, the third, uh, the third or the fourth. I, I think it's King Charles the third. Yes, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So and um, um, so, excuse me. Yeah. So and um, so he is he is the sovereign ruler over the United Kingdom here, where we uh, where we are. So he is the sovereign what ruler over this United Kingdom. Now, in the case of you know Christ, in the case of God, He is um, in the case of you know His God's kingdom. God's kingdom, uh, yes, it rules over all. It rules over all the kingdoms of the earth, uh, and so. But also, there is a domain 
over which you know his kingdom extends uh, both you know whether in heaven or uh, on earth praise the lord hallelujah so this is what you know we want to uh, look at but more importantly is you know how is god's kingdom done established you know how is god's kingdom what established so when, you, when we're talking about establishing something, we're talking about building something. It makes you know something is then being you know founded on a on on a on a good footing, uh, on a good basis. You know, so you are starting something, you are building something, you are you know having to found you know uh, well, yeah, you having to sort of like you know um uh you know build something. Let me yeah, let me just that's the best way to to describe it. So those are those are words you know um. You know that we can use for for that now so what we're talking about is here is establishing god's words kingdom in people's hearts establishing god's kingdom in people's hearts. now when we look at you know the old testament we see um you know so much about um you know conquests okay uh both of the uh of of the of, of israel as a nation and uh, and other you know uh, kingdoms as well uh, like the Babylonian kingdom or that Nebuchadnezzar, you know, that came and took and conquered, you know, um, Israel and took them to captivity because they had sinned against God. Yes. Um, so uh, you see the Philistines, you see, you know, them also coming at uh, Israel. Uh, they would capture them sometimes. Other ones, again, they would then, you know, Israel would then cry to God and then they would then, you know, um, Israel would then... Um, um, defeat them again as well. So there's that you know battle because these were the times of you no know, conquest, you know physical conquest, whereby you know kingdoms have been taken. You know they are going to other kingdoms and they are uh, they're fighting. So there's a lot of war. Uh, well, it's not as if you know there are no wars. You know going on today. Well, the Ukraine and Russia war is still they're still on. So but these things are still on. They are still carrying on. They still carry on. War never stops. War never stops. So there's, there's always you no know, something. There's always a reason for this war. And you know, there are people who benefit from war, so that's why war can never stop in the whole of the in, in the world. So I mean there are different you know, parts of the world where there's still uh, cry, uh, clashes and uh, all manner of uh, you know wars still taking place, civil war, uh, yeah, still taking place. Uh, obviously, within a nation, it's called civil war, and then within uh, among between, between two nations, that is um, a different kind of you know uh, war. So those are wars. So, but looking at you know the the topic here, establishing what God's kingdom in people's hearts. What we're talking about here, like I said, um, I'll give an example, or, or let's go to the scripture. Better, better for us to go to the scripture. We see that you know in the all through the Old Testament, like I said. Uh, there were so many examples of um, conquest. Now, if we look at, let's start from the book of you know, Genesis chapter 15. Genesis chapter 15, there was something that the Lord said to uh, to Abraham uh, when he when he when he told him about his descendants. Genesis chapter 15, I read from verse 13. Genesis 15, read from verse 13. It says, um, "Then he said to Abraham, No, certainly." that your descendants will be strangers in a land that is not theirs and will serve them and they will afflict them 400 years. And also the nation whom they serve, I will judge afterwards. Sorry, I will judge. Afterward, they will come out with great what, possessions. Um, I'll jump to verse 16. But in the fourth generation, they shall return here for the iniquity of the Amorite is not yet complete. The iniquity of the Amorite is not yet complete. Now, just you know, um, I'll, I'll come to that. Uh, then I'll, let me jump. I'll jump to verse you know, 18. It says, um, on the same day, the, the Lord made a covenant with Abraham, saying to your descendants, I have given this land from the river of Egypt to the great river, the river Euphrates, the Kenites, the Kenizzites, the Cadmonites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the, the, the Rephaim, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the, Gergesh the Gergeshites, and the Jebusites. So these are different, um, you know, people, and uh, they are kingdoms as well represented. And this is what, you know, God has given, you know, these guys their land, 
okay, they are kingdoms, okay, to Israel. Well, they weren't called Israel at this time. But you see, 400 years before, God had already spoken to Abraham to say, I'm giving your descendants these, um, uh, this land. This land. So God has already, so 400 years before Israel ever became a nation, God has already proposed that you no, know, they are going to get, you no, know, they, God has given them the land. Let me put it that way. Okay, all right now. So in the course of all this, in the course of time, they came and they began to what to possess land. Now, one of the key things there it says, you know, that for the iniquity, say that you no, know, they shall return here for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet what complete. Now, what is the iniquity of the Amorites? It's basically, you know, that idol worship, idolatry, idolatry. So one of the things that you no know, God, why God was having to take over these you no know, places was because these. Uh, nations were into idolatry. They were worshipping other gods. Right? Yeah, so they were serving other gods. And um, most of those gods were, uh, there were human sacrifices being, uh, being made to those gods. Yes, human sacrifices. You know, so which God abhors you know, completely. All right, yeah. So, and um, and all that you know defiles the land. It, it defiles the land. The human blood that is spilled defiles the land. You know, if you remember when um, Abel, um, when Cain, you know, killed um, Abel, Genesis chapter four, reading from verse nine says, uh, "Then the Lord said to Cain, Where is Abel, your brother?' He said, 'I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper?'" And he said, what have you done? The voice of your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. The voice of your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. The voice of your brother's blood cries out to me what, from what? From the ground. Now, the voice of those babies that were murdered okay, by that nurse um, have been crying out not to God. All right, Those are innocent you know, babies. They've been crying out not to God. Every innocent blood, every blood that has been spilled, that is killed, okay, every blood of, of, of a person that is, no ki uh, that is spilled or a person that is, that, that is murdered or whatever it is, there is, con is constantly crying out not to God. For what? For vengeance. And these things as well, you know, what they do is that you know, they empower, God forbid, they empower satanic activities in these, you know, areas, in these places. So you can see that, you know, one of the reasons why God had to uh, wipe off those nations was because of what the atrocities and the iniquities that was that was that were being perpetrated by uh, uh, by, you know, such the nations. So and God wanted, you know, his own kingdom, his own, you know, uh, domain, his own rule in those, you know, places where the King, where the children of Israel would then, you know, domicile, where they be domiciled. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. So this is what, you no, know, this you know, conquest was mostly all about. It was to eradicate such, you know, evil practices. And you can't eradicate such evil practices without, you know, completely, you know, um, eliminating such, you know, people who were there. Yeah, I mean, some people say, oh, yeah, God said, you no, know, do not kill. And yet, you know, you know, they were killing love, you know, <laughs> other, you know, nations. Hey, listen, you know, that's, you, you, you get the whole point wrong. These guys are committing atrocities, spilling human, you know, innocent blood, you know, of uh, for idol worship to their uh, to their demonic, you know, to demonic you know, gods, and it was uh, it's, it's really you know polluting the land. Praise the Lord! All those things polluting the land, even prostitution, polluting the land. Yes, you know, I can't remember the place where it is in scripture, but um, yeah, pollution, you know, prostitution. These they are the things that pollute the land. You know, um, yeah, so this thing. So God wanted his domain, his rule. Obviously, where God's you know, domain is, there is no such you know, evil being perpetrated at all. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right, yeah. So let's look at the book of you know, Deuteronomy chapter 3, for instance. Deuteronomy chapter 3. Deuteronomy chapter 3. Hallelujah. Praise God. Deuteronomy chapter 3. I read from verse um, 4. I read verse 4. 10 and 13. Deuteronomy chapter 3. Let me read from verse 3. It says, um, So the Lord God 
So the Lord our God also delivered, also delivered into our hands Og, king of Bashan, with all his people. And we attacked him until he had no what, no survivors remaining. And we took all his cities at that time. At that time, pardon me, there was not a city which we did not take from them. Sixty cities. All the region of Agob, the kingdom of Og in Bashan. All these cities were fortified with high walls, gates and bars, besides a great many rural towns. And we utterly destroyed them as we did to Sihon, king of Hishbon, utterly destroying the men, women and children of every city. But all the livestock and spoil of the cities we took as booty for ourselves. Then we look at, let's look at no verse no 10 here. It says, all the cities of the plain, all Gilead and all Bashan, as far as Nosalka and Edri, cities of the kingdom of, Go of Og in Bashan. These are, the places, these are the cities that they took. For only Og, king of Bashan, remained of the remnant of the kings, of the giants, pardon me. Indeed, his bedstead was an iron bedstead. It, is it not in in Raba of the people of Ammon, nine cubits is its length and four cubits is width according to the standard cubit. Verse 12 says, and this land which we possessed at the time from Aora, which is by this river Anon, and half the mountains of Gilead and its cities I gave to Rubenites and to the Rubenites and the Gadites. The rest of Gilead and all Bashan the kingdom of Og I gave to have the tribe of Manasseh, all the region of Agob, with all Bashan, was called the name of what of giants. So these are you know different you know, places, different cities that you know um, um, the Israelite nation you know possessed, they dispossessed you know, the inhabitants of those lands, and they took them. All right, they took them because why? Because God has already uh, given it to them, and He had given you know uh, them to them uh, for what for a possession. Now, where am I going to here? Now, these nations, like I said, these places you know were into idolatry, into idol worship, and what were they doing? They were mostly you know polluting the land, making the lands you know really very very you know difficult. And that's the thing. Most times you go to some places, you see that you know, life is very very difficult in some of those places. Why? Because of you know, the pollution of those places by you know evil practices, evil satanic you know practices, but this is why when God's kingdom come into a place, yeah, what you begin to see, you see prosperity, you see increase, you see blessings, you see growth, you see you see um, you know so many uh, good things you know taking place in such you know uh, places. Uh, praise the Lord, Hallelujah! Yeah. So, uh, I mean, I think there are some there are some uh, notable uh, revivals that have taken place uh, in different you know um, parts of the world. Uh, I think there's one called Al Molonga um, uh, in Guatemala. So there's one in Guatemala that happened, and as such that you know, the prisons you know, were completely shut <laughs> uh, at, at the time. I don't know what it is right now. Uh, vegetables uh, began to why because you know. There was the uh, uh, there was a revival that took place in that uh, in those in, in some of those you know, um, cities, some of those uh, uh, parts, and um, there was uh, such a massive revival that it affected everything. It affected everything, such that these guys prior to that revival, um, their their plants, their crops were not very very wasn't really, really yielding much. But when they repented, you could see that there was such you no know, massive improvement their agriculture they are i think they are their um watermelons are ma like massive also the carrots are like gigantic you know carrots uh yeah listen you can check it online i think it's somewhere in, in guatemala or so a revival i think it's in a place called alma longa i can't really give you the right uh, spelling of it uh but i checked it out and this is it's really amazing why what what is uh, what exactly is you no know, um responsible for this it is because god's presence came into that particular town that particular in the community that city that area why because the evil practices that was taking place there you know the people you know repented and they all turned to who to Christ, they were serving God. There was worship. There was prayers you know, going on daily on a daily basis in that particular you know uh, region of Guatemala, and that you know uh, 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 translated 
into you know peace and prosperity in those places praise the lord hallelujah now you know understand here that you know what happened in the old testament you know the wars and, and all the rest of that happened you know these are types of and shadows types and shadows of what it is that god has purpose you know, for us to do today now do we still fight wars? Yes, we fight in spiritual wars. Definitely, the Bible says, you know, that for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual hosts of wickedness. We're here in high places. Ephesians chapter 6, uh, from verse 12. Now, so what it is that, you know, there are people who are being held in bondage. Many people have been held captives. Many people are still enslaved to uh, Satan's, you know, uh, power. Uh, the Bible says in the book of you know, uh, Colossians chapter 1 verse 13, Colossians you know, 1 13, Colossians chapter 1 verse 13, he has delivered us from what? From the power of darkness and translated us and conveyed us into the kingdom of the son of his love. Who has what? Who has, del he has delivered us from what? From the power of what? Of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the son of his love now there are still many who are still trapped in this in the in uh, in the in the power in this kingdom of darkness so in the power of darkness because the kingdom of darkness is holding many in bondage because of what because of sin now but when through the preaching and the teaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. <laughs> now, that is how many will come to receive what they receive Christ as Savior and Lord. He then becomes the king of their lives. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. And this is key, very, very important. I mean, over the last you know, couple of weeks, uh, by the grace of God, we've seen that a lot. You know, uh, you know people you know, coming to Christ, uh, you know, people receiving Christ as Savior and Lord. Praise God. Amen. And it's so humbling. And I thank God for that because there's, the, 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 the need is great. And, and, and we are praying, you know, as a ministry for, uh, you know, for God to um, uh, send more laborers. They send more laborers. Send more laborers. And, you know, so um, you know, last week on Sunday, last week, you know, a fellow that was, you know, met, you know, engaging with the gospel and he gave his heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. Isn't that wonderful? You know, so, uh, you know, so things happen, and he said, you know, that you know, he didn't used to believe, he didn't used to believe in God, but he started believing in God. It's, uh, he had a, a bit of a crisis situation, he started believing in God. And uh, so we, we spoke, I told him about, about the Lord, about Christ, about you know, his kingdom, about you know, um, salvation, and he willingly received Christ as a Lord. Now, what has happened? That person who has been under uh, Satan's kingdom. Who has been held bound by the powers of darkness has now been liberated say you know and jesus christ is now what king over his life and what has, what is that god's kingdom now rules over that gent that that uh, that gentleman you know there's a man as well you know bob on saturday as well same thing you know gave his heart to the lord jesus christ and as I was you know, praying for him, the Lord spoke to me, you know, clearly I had a word of knowledge you know, for him. I said, you know, you have you no know, problem with your knees. He says, yes. He says, yes, yes. You know, prayed for him. And boom, you know, his knees, you know, he said a bit of stiffness in his knee, but it loosened after that, after that prayer. So, and what has happened? That is God's kingdom, you know, coming to bear, being established in the lives of these people. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So it is a fight. We are there. You and I need to be there. We are the soldiers of Christ. Okay. We are the soldiers. Okay. Now, don't forget. Now, understand this. You know that you know, God's, the God, you know, his, um, uh, his forces, you know, who work with us. Amen. I mean, this is not just a, um, a human, you know, uh, uh, you know, thing. No, it's, it's God that gives us, you know, such victories. Praise God. Hallelujah. So, Establishing God's kingdom in people's hearts or in the hearts of people is true, you know, um, reaching out with the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's true reaching to the lost because those are the ones who are bound. Those are the ones who are still held in bondage. Those are the ones whom the powers of darkness is still holding. Now, it doesn't mean that you no know, people who are in the church you know, don't need you know, deliverance. Yeah, oh yeah, definitely. There's more. That is where deliverance really kicks in. 
That's where it works. That is where you need to, you know, pray for people who are held in bondage for one thing or the other. Uh, there was a lady, you know, who was a Christian in one of the churches, uh, uh, you know, met with her about three, three weeks ago, thereabout, and, uh, you know, on the while out on the street, uh, I know how to be a Christian, you know, um, born again Christian. And uh, yeah, we, we talked and she was explaining to me the problem she was having such that she was not, um, she, you know, it was just what you call a spiritual, you know, attack against her. So she was then limping, she was couldn't really stand properly. Uh, she was, you know, if you seen her walking, you can see that, you know, she was really, really struggling to walk. You know, prior, you know, previously, I mean, prior to that, she's, you know, because she's a nurse. And uh, all the things again you know, that was happening, and she had to stop work, you know, for some time for about two months. You know, she couldn't cope, you know, at work. You know, little things she she can't handle it. So I said, hey, come on, let's pray. You know, prayed with her, you know, there, and we prayed, bound that devil out of her in the name of Jesus Christ, took authority over it, and you know, just you know, really, really released you not know, God's you no know, blessings upon her, and you know, to God be the glory. She is back to work. I mean, after being absent for two months, but she's back to work, you know, saw her, you know, that uh, uh, Saturday and she's working properly right now. No more limping as uh, as I saw her, you know, previously. Why? Because see, this is, this is what we're talking about. God's kingdom, praise the Lord, hallelujah, you know, God's kingdom, you know, coming to bear in the hearts and minds of people. And then, you know, for those who then receive Jesus as Savior and Lord, God's kingdom is then being established, what? In their hearts, praise God. So what are we doing? You have just you know destroyed, just like how the children of Israel, you know, God would give them, you know, um, victory over their enemies to just you know, you know completely, you know, um, overcome and defeat them. In the same way, God is giving us what that you know uh, by uh, the power of the Holy Spirit to just completely, you know, um, uproot and sack every demonic, you know, um, activities in the hearts and the lives of people. Uh, and so that you know, Christ is then uh, entrenched. Christ then becomes king over life, over the hearts and minds of these people in the might of Jesus Christ. So this is what you know, this is all about. Okay, it's about what establishing God's kingdom in the hearts of many. Praise the Lord, Hallelujah! It's about what establishing God's kingdom in the hearts of many that they become. They receive Christ as Savior and Lord. They become born again, and that you know, uh, devil that is you know uh, holding them in bondage or whatever it is, you know, um, uh, uh, that that has become um, that evil tyrant over their lives, his power, their power is broken off you know people's lives, and such people then receive Christ, and you see there's such joy, there's such peace in their lives in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. So if we look at the book of you know, Exodus chapter 19, one of, that, you know, um, one of the things that the Lord said to Israel, to the people of Israel at the time was that you, know, that you will be what a kingdom of what of priests unto me. Exodus chapter 19 verse 6. It says, and you shall be to me a kingdom, a kingdom of what of priests and a holy what nation, a kingdom of priests and a holy what nation. He said that these are the words which you shall speak to the children of Israel. A kingdom of what? Of priests. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. A kingdom of priests. So when you have that, and you find that in the, also in the book of First you know, Peter chapter 2, verse 9, it says, But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, uh, a holy nation, all right, uh, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who has called you out of what? Out of darkness into his marvelous lights. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. So, in there was the kingdom of priests in Exodus chapter 9, uh, um, uh, 19, verse 6. He said that you shall become a, what, a kingdom of priests unto me and a holy nation. Here, because he you are a chosen what, generation, a, what, a royal what, priesthood. Okay, a royal, royal priesthood. So, that is what the person becomes. When the person now receives Christ, when you are born again, you are now a chosen generation. You have become a part of a royal. You have become a royal priesthood. You become a holy nation, uh, just the same way as you know that Exodus chapter nineteen verse you know, six you know, puts it as well. It says that you shall become what a kingdom of priests and what and a holy nation to me, a kingdom of priests and uh, what and a holy nation to me. Okay, yeah, and what and a holy nation. So, and when you have this. 
when you, people are receiving Christ as Savior and Lord, what are, what's happening? They then become what? A chosen generation. They become what? A royal priesthood. They become what? A holy nation as well. Part of a holy nation. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So this is why. Um, what, what has happened? You have, they have been called out of darkness. Out of what? Out of sin. And this is why, you know, establishing God's kingdom in the hearts of people is so, so important. That through uh, the outreaches, through the gospel of Jesus Christ, uh, that we preach and we teach as well, that many be saved. Many, you know, would, 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 um, uh, uh, would o- overthrow, okay? We would overthrow Satan's rule over their lives. Yes, that's what it's all about. You know, we've heard about the coups in, in you know, um, uh, parts of you know, West and Central Africa, uh, whereby, uh, you know, military personnel are, are now, you know, um, taking over uh, the reign of government. What have they, the, the presidents have been ousted. Yeah, that's it. So, so what we do uh, spiritually is that you sack, you know, that you know, devil that is, uh, has enthroned himself over the lives of, you know, over the lives of you know, people, causing them to uh, you know, putting them in bondage of sin, in slavery or whatever, you know, trust me, you, you'll be surprised what people are going through. Uh, and then uh, um, enthroning Jesus Christ, hallelujah, as king over their lives. Isn't that wonderful? You see the peace. You see the peace and the joy. So that is what it's all about. So, and we do it by what? By reaching the lost. With what? With the gospel of Jesus Christ. Every week in the name of Jesus Christ. So this is what it's all about. This is a wonderful opportunity for us to keep reaching the lost so that you know, Christ, his kingdom, will reign in their lives in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Because when sin, where sin is dominating the life of a person, obviously that is the devil is ruling over the person's life. But when the person receives the gospel of Jesus Christ, when the Holy Spirit would, have, would, would, would arrest that person and convict that person, through the gospel of Jesus Christ, then you see that the person would then, you know, uh, you know, repent of his or her sins, and then he would, by his own confession of faith, has received Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. What does that mean? By that confession of faith, that means say Satan, and you and your and your evil, you know, uh, you know, demons that are, you know, uh, causing this person to sin, you are now sacked, you are ousted. You are, you know, defeated and out, cast them out of the person's life. And you see Christ coming. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Christ now comes in. And what does he do? He brings you no know, peace. He brings, you know, uh, victories in the lives of such persons. Why? Because God's kingdom has now been what? Established in the hearts of these persons. Praise God. Hallelujah. You know, so uh, the gentleman, you know, I was talking to on Sunday that gave his heart to the Lord. You know, he has, you know, um, uh, um, some alcoholic, you know, um, issues. And I said to him, listen, not to worry. You know, yes, you can go for the AA. Uh, and uh, You can go to the AA, you know, Alcoholic Anonymous. Uh, yeah, and, but the key thing is this. Receive Christ, I say, well, Lord. And then start living for him. Start studying the word. Start, you know, meditating on the word of God. And start, you know, attending church services as well. You have to even sign post him to a particular church. And that is what it, that's the way. And you see that, you no, know, you would not touch any liquor at all anymore in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. So, why? Because Jesus is now king over his life. The kingdom of God has now come upon his life. And the devil of the demon of alcoholism sacked, cast cast it out of his life, and he is now a free man to the glory of God in Jesus' mighty name. So this is what, you know, establishing God's kingdom in people's hearts is all about. Jesus Christ came for this particular purpose, that people will receive him as a king of their lives, as a king of, of, of God's kingdom, and that he will reign, he will reign in your heart, he will reign in my heart as well. He will, he, well, he's already reigned in my heart. Praise God, hallelujah. But he will reign in your heart. So if you, you know, um, uh, have not um, uh, repented of your sins yet, if you are still living in sin, you know that you know you are. You know that you know you, you know that you are not a born again Christian yet. And even if you are, but you know you're still struggling in so many areas or stuff. You know the challenges of life has somewhat you know, choked. Is choking your relationship with God. No, listen, 
The devil doesn't have any good plan for you at all. All he wants to do is to steal, to kill, and to destroy your peace, your love, I mean your joy, your blessings, and everything that God wants to give to you because it's only in holiness and righteousness that God can give those things to you. So you need to now repent of your sins, my friend. You need to be born again. You need to turn away from sins. You need to make that decision today, right now, and say no more you know, um, of a life of sin. I turn my back on sin, and I want you know, God's kingdom established in my life established in my heart in the name of jesus christ listen if you are that person and you are willing to pray this prayer jesus is already ready i know he's already touching your hearts right now and let us you know join faith together and let's just pray this prayer after me that you will receive christ and then god's kingdom shall then be established in your heart in your life in the name of jesus christ and you will have and you would never turn back you know uh, from serving the Lord in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, let's just pray together. Join me in this prayer. Repeat this prayer after me in a minute with all your heart and say no to the devil. No to his no evil works over your life anymore. Never. Make that decision right now. You can do that you know, with all seriousness and, and let's cast that devil out of your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Just repeat this prayer after me. Say, Dear God, I come to you today. I acknowledge that I am a sinner. I have sinned against you. And I have broken your laws. Now I know that I have done them all in ignorance. Ignorant of your ways and ignorant of your word. And I ask you to please forgive me. Wash me clean of all my sins. With the precious blood of your son Jesus Christ. I believe that Jesus Christ, your only begotten son, came into this world over 2,000 years ago. Died on the cross for me. To save me from my sinful nature and from sin and on the third day you raised him from the dead that i may be justified as though i never committed any sins therefore i willingly receive you jesus christ into my heart to be my savior from my sinful nature and from sin and to be the lord of my life to be the master of my life to be the one whom i now live for to be the one whom i now follow fill me with your holy spirit I receive your Holy Spirit to live a victorious and a successful Christian life, loving you, Jesus Christ, living for you, Jesus Christ, and serving you, Lord Jesus Christ, all the days of my life. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for accepting me as your son, as your child. For it is in Jesus Christ's holy name I have prayed. Amen and amen. Amen. All right, I'm just going to pray for you right now. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for these ones who have prayed this prayer. The Bible says that with a heart one believes unto righteousness, and with a mouth confession is made unto salvation. Thank you, Father, for them. I pray, Lord, Father, that you would keep them to the very end. I pray, Heavenly Father, that this decision that they have taken, being prompted and being led by your Holy Spirit, Lord, it shall speak to them, O Lord, even in, even in eternity in heaven with you, in glory in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, right now I pray for the baptism with the Holy Spirit and the baptism and with fire. Come upon them now in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, that they will be on fire for you, serving you. Lord, with your kingdom established already in their heart, Lord, that they will be on fire, serving you, O Lord. On fire for you, serving you, O Lord, living for you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, for them. Thank you for, your, for their families as well. Lord, salvation comes to all members of their families in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I give you thanks, O Lord. Bless them, O Lord. Bless the work of their hands as well. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, use them mightily to bring the gospel of your Son, Jesus Christ, to many. And that, you know, Christ be enthroned as King over the lives of many others as well. In the name of Jesus Christ, we give you thanks. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus Christ's holy name, I have prayed. Amen and amen. Amen. All right, we've got about, you know, just about four to five minutes. I want us to pray right now, okay? We're talking about the kingdom of God right now. So whatever is not of God in your life, we are going to pray right now. I'm going to pray right now with your faith joined with me. My faith joined with you right now. We're going to decree every work of the devil. The Bible says, no, who had delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his, of his, son, of his son, of his love. We're going to declare I'm going to pray right now for you that everything, every form of darkness, everything that constitutes darkness in your life, whatever it is, come on, Father, I decree such right now, destroyed 
in the lives of your children, your son, your daughter, whoever it is that the enemy is just you not, know, um, you know, carrying out some evil work, O oh Lord, in their lives. Because, O oh Lord, because they are your children, I come against that plan of the devil right in the name of Jesus Christ. And I, and I command every demonic activities, every satanic activities over the lives of anyone under the sound of my voice. I command that evil activity right now, destroyed now. I command it cease in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord, where the devil has brought sickness and disease, infirmity, whatever it may be, I rebuke that infirmity right now. I rebuke that sickness in the name of Jesus Christ. I overcome you tonight by the blood of Jesus and I cast you out of the lives of these ones right now in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus Christ. Whatever you are, you demonic spirits, you are causing evil, bringing about sickness, bringing about diseases, whatever it is that you are bringing in the lives of these ones right now, I command them terminated and uprooted and destroyed from the lives of these ones in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, every, O oh Lord, other plans, every work of the devil uh, against the blessings, the financial prosperity of your people, of these ones here. I come against that plan of the devil right now. By the authority in the matchless name of Jesus Christ, I come against it right now. And I declare right now, O oh Lord, blessings come. I declare, O oh Lord, prosperity come for these ones right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Sir. Lord, every, O oh Lord, attack of the kingdom of darkness against anyone or oh, inability to sleep O oh lord insomnia O oh lord uh, uh whatever it is O oh lord uh, 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 mortgage crisis O oh lord father uh, housing problems right now whatever they are i rebuke it right now and i declare right now that you know by the miracle working power of god i command breakthrough for you right now in the mighty name of jesus christ Lord, I declare breakthrough. I declare miracles right now by the authority in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, upon these ones right now. Thank you, mighty God. Lord, we look to you. Whatever anyone is looking to you for right now, Lord, I decree, Father, Lord, that they will come through for them now. Receive it right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I declare that no, you instead of glory, is uh, pardon me, instead of shame, you have double for your shame, and that will be the glory of God upon you now, be made manifest in your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we say thank you. We give you the glory. We give you the praise. I say, blessed, blessed be your holy name, O Lord. I cover each one's spirit, soul, and body right now with the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Lord, that your name be glorified in the lives of this one in Jesus' mighty name. I hear the Lord saying, you know, someone in our lives, no heart being strengthened. Lord, yes, strengthen these ones right now. Strengthen them. Some are weary. Some are getting, are, 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 are weakened in their spirit, in their, uh, in the, in their um, walk with you. Father, I pray tonight, O Lord, for anyone who is weary, who, oh Lord, is just so weary and uh, 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 just like, you know, uh, so many, you know, the, the pressure, you know, coming. I pray right now, Father, strengthen such ones right now with might by your precious Holy Spirit in their inner man. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for them. Strength, O oh Lord, for each one. Strength, O oh Lord, for each one. Strengthen each one right now. Going through such challenging situations, Father, I pray for your strength, O oh Lord. Strengthen them by the power of your Holy Spirit. By by your by your power of God in, your, in their inner man in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. That this ones you you I declare over you. I don't know who you are, but you you come out victorious out of this you no know, situation. You are I declare you will come. I decree over your life that you come out of it victorious in Christ, giving testimony to the Lord God Almighty for the deliverances, for the victories He has already granted unto you in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. I give you praise, O oh Lord. I will pray right now, Father, for more souls, more souls, O oh Lord, to receive your kingdom, to receive, O oh Lord, that your kingdom be established in many more souls in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray, Father, for, O oh Lord, laborers. We ask you, Father, send laborers. The, your, the harvest is truly great, but, that the, but the laborers indeed are few. Lord, we pray tonight, O oh Lord, send laborers to your harvest in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Abba, Father. Oh, we give it the glory and we give it the praise. We say, blessed, blessed, blessed be your holy name. Be exalted and be glorified. Thank you, Father. In Jesus Christ's holy name we have prayed. Amen and amen. Amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay. Thank you, Jesus.
I trust you are all blessed you know, by that, you know, um, uh, administration. Thank God for that. All right. So um, it would be great, you know, you know, to hear from you what the Lord has done uh, for you in this uh, this uh, prayer sessions. And I know that God has done something for you. So please do not hold back. Please, you know, share your testimonies with us, and uh, and uh, we would uh, celebrate and you know rejoice together with you for what the Lord has done in Jesus' mighty name. Also, for those of you who also have received Christ as Savior and Lord in the course of this service, I want you to know that's the greatest miracle you can ever have, you can ever you know uh, receive. So again, um, share your testimony with us of what the Lord has done for you, and uh, we'll be glad to um, celebrate and rejoice with you as well in Jesus' mighty name. There are four things I would recommend that you start to do now that you have received Christ as Savior Lord. Uh, number one, you start to attend a Bible-believing, teaching and preaching church. It must be, um, <clears throat> excuse me, um, it must be uh, a church you know, that honors you know, God, uh, one that also um, um, reverences you know the holy spirit yeah, i mean that that you know, honors you know, that reverences you know, christ honors god reverences jesus christ and also reverences the person of the holy spirit as well so that is and they also emphasize on the baptism of the holy spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues that is the church that we recommend that you start to attend and start to go to okay all right uh number two um you must have uh, start to read the bible the god's word is not is uh, is not whenever uh, it is 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 when you feel like it, it is you must do it just as you always eat uh your eat every day so you must feed your spirit man every day so the word of god is for uh the nourishment of your soul praise god hallelujah so of your spirit man pardon me so please endeavor to do that please read the bible uh every day spend time you know meditate on it it's also important and um uh, you can also um Join us up here every Wednesday and every Friday uh, when we are on, so because we focus on the Word of God, and then you would also be blessed by the Word of God here that we um, that we preach and that we teach as well in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Praise God, Hallelujah! So that's number two. Number three, uh, you must have an active prayer life. Okay, you must have a very very active prayer life. You need to do that. Uh, that's the way you can be strengthened in your faith. I was like I said, I was praying. And the Lord just you know, talked about you know, uh, someone being strengthened, uh, um, you know, in their faith. Okay, because you know that person is on our time. But one of the ways you can do that is through a committed prayer, you know, um, uh, you know, lifestyle, a committed life of prayer, a very very committed one. And praying in the spirit strengthens you. Honestly, the Bible says, you know, that you no know, he that speaks in a tongue edifies himself. So. You edify, edify yourself, that means you are building up your spirit, man. building up, praise God, hallelujah. So you don't want to miss that at all. Make sure that you, know, you are praying and uh, you are also praying in the spirit. If you don't know how to pray in the spirit, then um, let us know and then we can you know, probably you know, have a prayer session again whereby um, we'll, you'll be filled with the Holy Spirit and with the evidence of what I'm speaking in tongues, praise God, hallelujah. Um, the other thing again is uh, now that you're born again, hey, don't keep it to yourself. Start to tell people about Jesus. And one of the ways that we do it is out there on the streets. We go out there because, you know, th that's where the lost are. The lost are there. The lost is not in the church, but the lost are out there. So we reach to the lost. We're out there on the streets. We get tracks, you know, to have tracks in our hands. And we're there saying to people, Jesus loves you. God loves you, you know, and, you know, Jesus came to die for you. You know, we we'll do that, and then we engage, you know, them with the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is also important. They, you know, and it, there's so much that you know uh, God has put in us, uh, His people. You know, His, you know, uh, um, uh, you know, born again Christians to be able to really reach out, you know, to the Lord. So please don't keep it to yourself. Don't keep it to yourself. Okay, let us go out there and keep reaching the lost with this wonderful, glorious gospel of our Savior, Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So I would encourage you, do that, and God will bless you richly, 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 in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, uh, yeah, this is all we have time for. Um, don't forget, we'll meet again on, on Friday at the same time of 7 p.m. 
Uh, so please, you know, um, we look forward to seeing you there as well on that fr on Friday at 7 p.m. where we'll be, you know, uh, carrying on with the topic on cause and effect of sin or righteousness. Cause and effect of sin and righteousness. So don't miss it at all. Uh, that's what you call, there's cause and effect, okay? If you are in sin, there's what you call cause and effect. If you're into righteousness, it's cause and effect. So get to, uh, don't, you know, make a date, you know, put it in your diary, uh, you know, um, so that uh, you don't forget. Uh, and then you can also hit the notification bell or subscribe to the channel so that when we're on, then, you know, you get notified and you can join in us uh, so that you can be blessed as well with the service. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's been such a blessing and always a privilege to bring the word of life to you all again today. So I thank you so much for your time. And I close by declaring the word of the Lord over you. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you. The Lord be gracious unto you. Lift his kindness upon you and give you and your family and all that concerns you peace and peace and peace on all sides in the name of just all round peace and settlement for you and your family, your home, your marriage, your children, your, uh, your business, the work of your hands and everything that concerns you. I declare peace and peace and all round peace and all round settlement for you in Jesus Christ. My name we have prayed. Amen and amen. Amen. Thank you so much. I look forward to seeing you again on Friday. God bless you. Bye. Join Lighthouse Gospel Ministries every Wednesdays for Bible study and Fridays for revival service on Facebook, Instagram or YouTube via the links showing on the screen. Follow us on all our social media pages for daily inspiration from the Word of God.